Bought an airbrush. Yep. If you've thought about it or you have any reservations, I recommend you just take the plunge. This is the one I got and I love it. No great shakes or anything, but I mean, perfect for learning, perfect for a newbie like me. Not that expensive. Uh, I mean, you can see the results that you can get even with a cheap one like this. Fairly decent. So, um, today we're going to build something that is similar to and inspired by, but definitely not the same as, a Necron monolith. So, in the description below this video is a link to download some templates that I made. Start with the big one that's in two pieces. Trace and cut out these pieces from cereal box, and lightly score along all the internal lines to make them fold easier. Make four copies. I secure them with thin beads of hot glue along the inner edges. Now from some clear plastic that came from some kind of package, I cut out a rectangle one and a half inches wide by one and three quarters of an inch tall, and apply a swirl of hot glue to it. And set that aside for now. I'm going to collect parts to power three green LEDs. Here's the parts list. And remember to revisit episode 56 for information on how to design and build custom lighting circuits. Here's a bunch of fake diamonds I bought at the crafting store. It was like a pouch of them for five bucks. It included a few big ones, so we're going to take one of those and set it aside for now. I'll cut a five inch square from sturdy chipboard. Uh, here's the stuff that I use. And draw lines on it to indicate where those four main body pieces are going to be attached. Basically, measure in one and three quarters of an inch from each corner and connect the lines across. Now print this smaller template and again build four of them from cereal box. Next, print this template, trace and cut out three copies of it from double corrugated cardboard and apply corrugation cladding. If you're new to the channel, that just means hot glue on some very thin cardstock to the corrugation. And then with this piece, trace and cut out two pieces of dollar store foam board and two pieces of single corrugated cardboard, again with corrugation cladding. So you sandwich all these together with hot glue and the overall thickness comes out to one and a half inches. Nice. Make sure to align them about the inner bottom corner. Now hot glue the whole thing to the base plate. And then hot glue two of the main body pieces to each side of it as shown. Make sure to glue the bottoms and the sides for strength. Work quickly so that the hot glue doesn't cool on you. Now one thing I forgot to do, cut out that middle one and a half inch square. Then cut three half inch tall double corrugated cardboard strips and hot glue those at the locations shown, one on each side of the hole and one at what will later become the front of the monolith. Now I'm going to stage a pair of wires through the hole in the base plate, leaving lots of slack on both ends. Just pin them to the wall with a bit of hot glue for right now. And again from chipboard, cut out this rectangle, dimensions as shown, and hot glue it on as you see here, bending the flap at the end. Now you have a little compartment underneath, and this is where you hide your battery and switch. In hindsight, I should have soldered those up before attaching the wires. Would have been a lot easier, but anyways, get them connected up. Again, episode 56 if you need a refresher on the circuit. Now I prepare my LEDs by soldering their resistors to one leg and a bit of hot glue for strength and insulation. And see what I've done here, just a bit of foam board to mount them to and solder them to those wires that we had staged before, which I've cut down to proper size now. Also you'll see a new pair of wires tapped in here as well. These are going to be used later on for the third LED.
Now we can go ahead and hot glue our portal surface on, right at the front edge, and ensuring that it's parallel to the main body. Then attach a strip of cereal box to complete this sort of chamber. Take the opportunity and slather the compartment with a light or lime green color. Now hot glue on the other big pieces, those arcs, and the two main body quadrants. And another strip of chipboard, one and a half inches wide, scored lightly to give sections of two inches, three inches, and four and three eighths of an inch. Punch a hole as shown for the wires, and hot glue it in place. Now I raided my old Lego collection for Technics pieces. I looked for some structural members that were black and which I could use to make a sort of curving boom arm, just like the original inspirational image. Here's what I came up with, and a little super glue to make them permanent. Hot glue a strip of cereal box to that. And then I realized that the holes in these pieces would be a neat opportunity to intertwine the wires through, so I did that. And solder the third LED in place, attaching it to the boom arm with hot glue. Let's make the front door. Chipboard, one and a half inches wide by one and three quarters of an inch tall, and a thinner piece of cereal box glued to the middle of that. Then I raided my bead collection and found some circular metal bits, and chopped those as well as some toothpicks, attaching them with super glue to recreate the icon from the inspirational image. Set the door aside for now. As for the back, inject hot glue into some drinking straws and attach those and then attach an applesauce pouch cap. This is the same kind I used for the airship back in episode 47. Okay, airbrush. I love this thing. It's entry level, very cheap, but for under 100 bucks it was the compressor and this, so the price was right for a noob like myself. I've based the whole model in black. Ignore the highlights you see on it right now, I was just experimenting before I got started. So I start with grass green, or any really kind of forest green will do. Mix it directly in the cup with a few drops of deionized water, and then go. I'm running at about 10 PSI here. I tried to add a faint glow to most of the black, so I sprayed from a distance so it would be a light application. Then along the corners and edges, I got a bit closer to create the first stage of a glowing effect. Next up is a lime green color which I only applied to the corners and edges, a little closer in so that the width of the beam is slightly smaller than the original base green. Again, we're working up towards a glow effect. Lastly, I took some yellow, thinned slightly, and edge highlighted the entire model. You can clearly see where I started to get impatient on the backside, and I did a really bad job, but this is cardboard, it's a proxy. If I ever buy the real thing, then I would dedicate the time to make it perfect. Note that when you apply the yellow it will seem too bold, but have faith. When it dries it will be muted. And finally I took that fake diamond and hot glued it to some random black Lego piece which I attached to the top. And here it is in my army of Necrons, including the Annihilation Barge we did back in episode 55. If there's, well, there's a bunch of things I'd do different, but I wish there was a way I could have made the portal surface a little foggier so that it would uh, throw more light. Right now it's see-through and you can see the two lights and it, it doesn't really glow. Although in the dark it's not so bad. We will get a look at it in the dark. So this is a particularly challenging project. If you're thinking about an airbrush, I recommend you pull the trigger and you do it. Again, here's the one I bought. 
All right, guys, I'm going to be off for two or maybe three weeks. Uh, got some big renovations for the channel coming up. Very excited about it. So I'm Wylock, and I will see you next time.